Hey everyone and welcome back to our SolidWorks for Beginners tutorial series. In this video we're going to be talking about sketches in SolidWorks. I'll talk about how sketches are used, some of the main workflows in a sketch, and the best practices for creating sketches in SolidWorks. This will be a great introduction before we dive into the details of all the different sketch commands in later videos. I'll also be talking about the golden rule of sketching in SolidWorks. This is something that you absolutely have to do on every single sketch that you create. Well, let's dive in. All right, let's kick this off by opening up a new part file. So I'm gonna go up onto the quick access toolbar, I'm gonna to click new, and then I'm gonna select my basic part file um, that I use for inch pound seconds, so imperial units. So now in the command manager, we're gonna be focusing on primarily the sketch tab, but I also wanna point out in the features tab kind of how these two things work together. So features, you could think of as 3D features um, or 3D commands. And then on the sketch tab, you can think of these as 2D commands or 2D features. Most of the main uh, 3D features under the features tab are based on 2D sketches. So in order to create an extrusion or revolve, I need a sketch to do that. So for the most part, you're going to be starting with a sketch in SolidWorks in order to create that 2D geometry that your 3D geometry is going to be based off of. So before we get a little bit deeper into the sketch tab, I just want to demonstrate this quickly. So if I click sketch to create a new sketch, the first thing it's going to do is ask me which plane do I want to create that sketch on. So all sketches in SolidWorks, you're going to start with a base plane that the 2D geometry is going to be sketched on. And that's where your feature is going to start. So if I want to create a cylinder, I'm going to click the top plane and I'm just going to draw a simple circle here. I'm going to use my right click drag to access my mouse wheel. I'm going to select dimension and then I'm going to drop this dimension on that circle and we're going to go with a one inch diameter. And now if I complete this sketch, I have a sketch of a, a circle, pretty simple. But now if I go to features, I have my sketch selected and if I click this extruded boss base, now it's going to grab that sketch profile and it's going to allow me to extrude that into a 3D geometry. So if I go three inches on the height or the distance of that extrude, I complete that, now I have a 3D cylinder. And then if I go into my feature tree, um, I can see underneath this boss extrude that I have my sketch that's related to the top plane and this boss extrude is based on that sketch. So now I can right click on the sketch if I wanna edit that. I can go in and edit this sketch. Let's say I wanna make this now a three inch diameter circle that I wanna extrude. If I complete that, and then I'm gonna use my hotkey to go to the isometric view and now I have this three by three cylinder. So it's three inch diameter by three inch tall. So I just wanted to show how these sketch and features work together in SolidWorks. So now that we have an idea how sketches are used in SolidWorks, I'm gonna clear this out and let's start deep diving into the sketch tab a little bit more. So I'm gonna delete this boss extrude feature. I'm just gonna select it, hit the delete key, and then it's gonna ask me, um, are you sure you wanna delete this? And what I can do is I can check this delete absorb features and what that's gonna do is delete the sketch that that feature is based on as well. And then we're gonna have a, a blank feature tree. So let's start a new sketch and I just wanna talk about some of the other basic controls um, within a sketch. So if I start a new sketch, I'll go back to the top plane and I'm gonna drop a couple lines in here, something like this, and maybe I'll do another line separate from that other group. So there's a few different ways to select different uh, sketch geometries that, as you make your sketch. Um, you can click on any feature or sketch geometry by just clicking on it like that. Um, I can hold down control or shift to select multiple different things and click them individually to select groups. I can also right or sorry, left click and drag from right to left to get this green box. And what this will do is anything touching this green box will be selected. If I drag from left to right, only the things inside the blue box will be selected. So you can see it only selects that top line. So if I go like that, I can select everything. If I go like that, I can also select uh, those same three lines. Another good thing to know is if I start a circle command um, and say I wanna escape or back out of this, um, I can hit escape at any time and it'll cancel that. I can also complete that and you'll notice that I still have the circle command up. You can see on the left side here, I'm still working with the circle uh, sketch geometry. I can hit escape to cancel that as well. So I'm gonna select everything and delete that. So like I said, the goal of any sketch is to create the 2D geometry or profile that'll be used to generate a, th a 3D feature from. And within any sketch, we have a few different tools and workflows to help do that. 
Um, so the first thing is obviously the sketch geometry. So things like lines and circles and splines, rectangles, arcs, ellipse, um, slots, polygons. We also have uh, different editing tools. So things like the sketch fillet, the chamfer, um, trimming tools, convert entities, mirrors, and linear patterns. We also have dimensions, obviously. So, uh, you know, within a sketch, I can snap a dimension onto a line and drive that to be whatever size I want it to be. And then there's also something called relations or constraints within SolidWorks. So if I draw a line off at an angle like this, but I want that to always be vertical, I get this quick kind of heads up selection um, screen here and I can hit make vertical and now it adds this green box letting me know that this is constrained to be vertical always. So the only way to undo that is to select that constraint and delete it and now I can tip that uh, to be at whatever angle I want again. So there are other constraints um, and I'll go through you know the sketch features and some of these editing tools and the constraints and everything a little bit more in detail but keep that in mind that really the main tools you have when working with sketch are the geometry, dimensions, the different editing tools and those constraints. So SolidWorks also has um, a few different things that kind of help with the workflow. Um, a lot of these are preference. I don't generally use a lot of these, um, but you may find them useful. So quick snaps is another way of selecting you know, different uh, points on other sketch geometry when you're creating more sketch geometry. Again, I don't find it particularly useful, um, but some might. There's rapid sketch, which allows you to quickly start sketches from the 3D which I won't be covering this video, but feel free to look into it uh, further. I may go into it in future videos. There's also Instant 2D, which allows you to edit um, sketch dimensions from even the 3D model, even if the, the sketch is fully defined by um, dimensions already. And then there's also this uh, shaded sketch contours, which is kind of useful in a couple different ways. So if I create a circle, um, you know, it just shows me the line. But if I check on this shaded sketch contours, um, it actually shades in the inner profile letting me know that it is an enclosed profile and then the other thing that this does is now um, I can actually click and drag this profile like that if I were to turn that off I can't select the internal of that and I can't actually move that profile around but as soon as I turn that on now when I click on the shaded area it allows me to kind of drag that around like that so you can move a circle around by grabbing the center point so it's not like it's a necessity to do that and a lot of times you're constraining or locating the circle in other ways um, anyway but for somebody who may be a beginner, uh, it might be useful by letting you know when a sketch is fully enclosed. So again, if I turn that on, this is not an enclosed profile. And sure, you can visually see that, but um, one way to know for sure is to turn on that shaded sketch contour so that when this is now an enclosed profile, it actually shades that for us so that we can see it. And you get the added benefit of being able to move that around by grabbing that shaded area. So if you're someone who's been um, historically a 2D CAD user, for example, AutoCAD, sketching in SOLIDWORKS might seem a little bit counterintuitive to you because oftentimes with 2D CAD, sketch geometry is absolute and you're creating that geometry based off of direct inputs. So for example, if you're an AutoCAD user and you're trying to create a line, you're probably thinking, you know, where, where do I put in the start point of this line? You know, you're hoping you can enter 0, 0 to go to the origin. Um, and then you want to enter the length or, you know, the angle of that line or things like that, right? But with SOLIDWORKS, we're, we're not really doing that. A lot of times we're just using point and click commands to create the rough geometry. And then we're using dimensions and relations to actually get that geometry to the correct size and shape that we're looking for. So, for example, again, if I were trying to create a horizontal line in AutoCAD, I would enter 0, 0 and then 2, 0 to create a horizontal line. But in SOLIDWORKS, I'm just drawing a horizontal line and then I'm gonna attach a two inch dimension to it to create that two inch horizontal line. So since SOLIDWORKS is parametric by nature, um, you can really take advantage of that by making your sketch features relative to one, one another um, and incorporating a lot more design intent into your sketches. So a really quick example of that, I'm just gonna make this into a rectangle real quick. And I am going to draw two holes in this rectangle. And you're noticing I'm just roughly sketching this now I'm going to select these two holes and I'm going to make them equal in diameter. And let's say I want to make this one inch height. Now I have a few different options here. I could dimension this at a half inch to put these holes at um, a half inch height to center them on you know, the vertical portion of that rectangle. But I'm going to take advantage of SolidWorks's um, parametric features and the relative nature of sketch features in SolidWorks. And I'm going to do something maybe a little bit counterintuitive here. So I'm going to lock this line horizontal. I'm going to lock this line vertical 
and then I'm going to add another construction line here and then I'm going to lock that one horizontal as well. And now I have some relational geometry going on here. And you'll notice that these holes are now centered horizontally and vertically um, in the outer rectangle. So I'm going to add some more dimensions just to kind of fully define this. And why this is so powerful, you know, as a designer or an engineer, if I know that these holes are always going to be centered horizontally and vertically within this rectangle, now as I make revisions or changes to this design, um, those holes will always stay in the center of it. So with one change, now I can change the outside rectangle while keeping those holes and those interior features centered within that. So that's just a really quick example of how you can incorporate design intent and take advantage of SolidWorks's um, parametric and relational design features. So the last thing I wanna cover in this intro to sketching in SolidWorks is the concept of full sketch definition or fully defining your sketch. And with any sketch, you always wanna be sure that all of the sketch features are fully defined. And to show you what I mean, um, I'll walk through a couple examples of this. So right now, everything, all of my lines and all the geometry of this sketch is turned black because it's fully defined. I can't move or change any of these features by clicking and dragging them. Um, if I were to delete this dimension on the whole diameter, now it allows me to click and drag and move that whole diameter. That means that it's not fully defined. So obviously in order to redefine that uh, circle feature, I have to apply a dimension to that. So another example of this, if I delete this horizontal constraint on this construction line, well now that line is no longer locked horizontal so I can move these holes wherever I want. So I'm gonna hit undo there. And then same thing if I delete this midpoint constraint, well now that line is locked horizontal but it's no longer attached to anything so I can move this um, around again. And then another example here, this line has a vertical constraint. If I delete that, well now it allows me to tilt this line. So you can tell this, this sketch is not defined by um, if you can see any blue uh, sketch lines or sketch features as you're going through and doing your design. So you always want to make sure that your sketch is fully defined. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video gave you a basic understanding of sketches and SolidWorks. In the next video, I plan to dive deeper into each individual sketch command and go through examples of each. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Also, if you're looking for more engineering related content, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel where I cover everything from engineering software to solving engineering problems with Excel and a lot of other things in there and coming in the future. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.